Um, so we live in 2020, and everybody, anytime that anything happens, that people just say, oh, well, it's 2020. Even things that are like normal occurrences, like um, hurricanes and, and all kinds of different stuff, it's like, oh, well, it's 2020. It's like we're trying to find the apocalypse everywhere, and, you know, we're going to be looking at this for the next couple of weeks. Um, and I think that sometimes people, it's almost like they, people want there to be this big, like, thing, like, oh, this is going to be the zombies or something, I don't know, like, kind of like we look for things to get upset about, and kind of like we look for things to kind of blow out of proportion, and not that we would ever do something like that, right? So, that brings us, obviously, to the mark of the beast, because everybody thinks that this is going to be it, you know, when cell phones came out, cell phones were the mark of the beast, and, you know, there's always something else, so this is the mark of the beast, this is the mark of the beast, and here's the thing. I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't be discerning, but I think that there's just a lot of confusion with this. Um, I have noticed a recurring theme that the people who find the mark of the beast everywhere are typically people who aren't real involved in a church, and they don't really read the Bible too much. They just kind of come up with their own crazy theories, and then they just kind of run with it. So let's, let's, let's spend a little bit of time looking at this. Two weeks ago, we, we brought up the idea of, um, so is the mark of the beast going to be a actual thing or is it more of um like like is it a literal thing or is it or is it not um and i purposely didn't answer the question because well we don't know what the mark of the beast is but i think that it is wise to not just hop on every single um every single bandwagon you know 5g network that's the mark of the beast and and the coronavirus vaccine that's the mark of the beast it's like okay all right let's Let's calm down. So I'm uh, some things that some things that bother people are things that are um, what's it called? Um, not overly wise things. Like for instance, um, is it wise to get chipped and let the government track you? Is that a wise thing? Um, historically, no. That's a terrible idea. Um, Historically, people who have trusted the government has, have always been let down. Because even if the person who currently is in the position is a trustworthy person, what happens when the next person is, you know, hungry for power? I mean, look at look at China's history, um, you know, with their emperors and whatnot. They talk about, you know, these wise emperors and all this stuff, and then what happened to those wise emperors? Well, as time went on... See what I mean? They started to rule by other things instead of wisdom. And uh, so, it, you know, e even with good intentions, some things are just a bad idea. Yeah, tracking people could be a good thing um, in, in the sense of, you know, tracking a murderer or that kind of stuff. But it also could be a bad thing in the sense of, you know, being taken advantage of by the government and whatnot. But see, that that's what I'm saying. So that's an issue of wisdom and discernment. That's not really an issue of the mark of the beast. And I think that sometimes as Christians, we kind of blur the lines. Like, I don't think this is a good idea. It scares me and it kind of unsettles my in my heart and kind of unsettles me. So I'm going to say that it's a spiritual thing or that it's the mark of the beast rather than just saying, I don't feel good about that. And I think that sometimes the Holy Spirit will kind of impress things on you. But that does mean that every single time that you're scared of something or that something new happens or that something kind of seems like a bad idea that it's definitely the, the Holy Spirit speaking to you. There is such a thing as your own ideas, your own voice, you know, misleading yourself, a lot of things like that. And then sometimes we as people are just scared uh, of the new. We're scared of change. Um, so, I mean, obviously, people have really been exploiting theories on, you know, the mark of the beast, and you're seeing a lot of things about the apocalypse and Armageddon and all this stuff on television, on Netflix originals, on Amazon Prime originals, you're just kind of seeing it everywhere. It's kind of like, okay, everybody, it, it, everybody's mind is on the on the end times, on, on the apocalypse, on all these different things. You know, you're seeing it in video games, you're seeing it in movies, it's kind of like this, this recurring theme that has just attracted way too much attention, and very little of it is actually based on the Bible. And I think that sometimes Christians, well-meaning Christians, have kind of helped push it in this direction like for instance the left behind books some people are convinced that that is uh those are those books are biblical that they kind of hold weight for what's going to happen and it's like well not 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 quite <laughs> so you know eh, it's really best to get your information from the bible not from 
conspiracy theorists, not from televangelists, not from these people who, I have the end times completely figured out, here's it completely drawn out in, in um, historical, con you know, uh, not historical context, but, um, you know, the chronological breakdown of the end times and everything. It's like, well, let's maybe put a cork in that, you know. You can't be overly confident about things that haven't happened yet. I mean, take, for instance, when Jesus came, all these religious people who had all the answers, they knew what the Messiah was going to do, what it was going to, every, they knew all of it. They knew where he was going to come from, where, what, you know, what he was going to do and all this stuff. And then Jesus came and they're like, nope, this can't be right. Uh, even though he came with signs and, and, and stuff and the Antichrist will come with signs and that kind of stuff. So it's like, you know, there's just a lot of things where people think that they are discerning about everything. We as people, we always assume that we're so discerning and everybody else is stupid. That's how we always interpret things. So is it possible that maybe we've misled ourselves into thinking that, no, I've accounted for everything, I'm too smart to be duped, and in so thinking we've actually duped ourselves? I mean, is that is that possible? I think it is. Uh, <laughs> I definitely think it is. Um, so, okay. So let's look at some things in Revelations. Chapter 7, verse 3, it says, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. So this is talking about a mark from God that is on the foreheads, just like uh, the mark of the beast was on the foreheads. Okay, and then uh, chapter 9, verse uh, 4, says, They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant, or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So here again, we have the mention of the mark of God. Now, you wouldn't know that there's a mark of God because people talk on and on about the mark of the beast. It's like, oh, I'm not going to get this because that's the mark of the beast. It's like, well, it kind of seems in the book of Revelation like it's something that people actually kind of agree with and that they kind of go along with, not necessarily that they were duped into it. Um, and it, it's it's kind of hard because it's talked about kind of vaguely and only in a few spots. And, I mean, the mark of the beast is really only mentioned like two or three times in the whole of the Bible. So, I mean, this is something that... It, it's not as cut and dry as people make it out to be. So, here's the thing. it, it this, this mark, the mark of the beast and the mark of the God, mark of God... Uh, they're probably not literal. They're probably not actual marks on the forehead. Um, this is more talking about how these people have their identity in God. What was it that had the mark? They, they had the mark on, on on the forehead about God, and it was it was, you know, it was something that identified them as gods. Something that identified them as God has given me a new name. God has given me a new future, and. Kind of the, the theme there seems to be that the identity, your identity is found in God, not so much that, um, how am I trying to say this? Not so much that there's an actual like stamp on your forehead, okay? So keep things maybe in perspective there. Um, so the implication, if God's mark probably isn't literal, is then probably that the mark of the beast probably isn't literal. Now, once again, we can't know for sure, but it just kind of seems from that the mark of the beast more has to do with people who are um, in rebellion against God and who choose that the ways of sin over the ways of God. So now, let's let's say, does this have anything to apply to me today? Well, I think it has a lot to apply to. See, a lot of us don't want the mark of the beast, but then we are not actively living as though we have the mark of God on our foreheads. It's something that's hidden away, or maybe something that, oh, I'm a religious person, or, oh, I believe in God, or whatever, and it's not really anything that's real personal. There's no actual mark there. It's not a defining trait in your life. It has to do more of, I just don't want the mark of the beast. And it's kind of a poor reason. So... Revelations, here's the thing about the book of Revelation. It's very symbolic. It's very metaphorical. I mean, there, there's a dragon in there that's obviously not really a dragon. There's a woman in there that's obviously not really a woman. There's uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on in there that, that aren't really what they seem. So 
if it doesn't, if the book of Revelation doesn't specific, uh, specify whether something is literal or not, it's kind of a, a, an important issue that you don't just build doc doctrine off of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you take something in the book that you don't know if it's a metaphor or whether it's literal and the book itself doesn't clarify, maybe it's not a great idea to rush to the conclusion of, let's build an entire doctrine off of this. And I think that that's kind of what's happened with the Mark of the Beast. It's something where, rather than saying, okay, what does this have to do with me? What can I learn from this? Um, what is God trying to tell me? What, 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 does the, what, is, what is the meaning? What, when this was originally written, what was John trying to get across to his audience? What was Jesus trying to get across to John's audience? But instead, we just kind of push the whole book away. Confusing, scary book. Let's take out the mark of the beast. You know, and it's just kind of something that doesn't really um, fit necessarily. And then we still just kind of say, okay, no, yeah. Let's just kind of take this and kind of run, run crazy with it. So it's never a good idea in the Bible to take one part that you really just don't understand and then just form a whole doctrine off of that. Um, maybe see if other books of the Bible can clarify. Um, I always tell people who are new to the Bible, who've never you know read something and something really you know, holds them up in some, or something, I always tell them this, look, until you're more used to studying the Bible, don't... Don't build doctrine off of something that appears in the Bible one time. Try to try to see if it appears throughout the Bible three or more times, and and then, and and they always ask, well, why that? Well, here's the thing: there's a lot of things, especially if you're new to the Bible, where you'll take something and you won't understand it, and so then you'll build an entire doctrine off of it, to where now you believe that you know all this stuff about um, angels and all these different things and. Well, this says this, and it's like, well, no, actually, it doesn't say that. This is this is what it's talking about, and this is what it means, you know. And, and if you look over here, the, this passage of here kind of, but I mean, there's a lot of things that, that people have just kind of created that that the Bible says that it really doesn't, you know, like cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, it, it actually doesn't say that. Um, that before Jesus came, that there was a purgatory or like an in between heaven and hell kind of deal. Even though the Bible doesn't teach that, there's one or two parts that are kind of vague as to what it means. And so instead of saying, okay, well, what is this trying to say? Just saying, okay, nope, we're, we're inventing a like an in-between kind of situation. I'll give you an example right now. Paul talks about um, the third heaven or whatever, and what he's talking about is in uh, Greek thought, there's the different planes, like there's a sky and whatnot, and so the third heaven would be, the, you know, where where God is and all that stuff. It's, it has nothing to do with, like, these different realms of, of of heaven like we think of it, but the problem is we we read a passage like that, and we just kind of don't really connect the dots because it's a 2,000-year-old book. So rather than understanding what it meant back then, we started developing our own ideas, and we come up with all kinds of crazy things. So maybe instead of finding the mark of the beast everywhere, worry about whether you have the mark of God. Well, how, do you, how can you know that? Well, I'll start with reading the Bible. Does, does it, are you in submission to God? Is it where he has ownership of your life? Are you living for you or are you living for God? Are you ashamed of, 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 of what God has made you or, or is it something that is a defining trait of who you are? Do you have different realms of your life? This is my church role. I go to church and I pretend to be happy all the time, and then I go to work and I live my actual life. Well, I, I pretend like I'm a real good person, and then the whole time I'm watching porn and cheating on my wife. So I mean, like, in, instead of finding the mark of the beast literally everywhere, oh, this is the mark of the beast, this is the mark of the beast, instead, a way better question is, where do I stand? Instead of saying, oh, I will never get the mark of the beast, are you right now marked by the beast in the way that you live? Where if God were to come back right now today, he would say, I never knew you. That's a heavy statement. That's why the Bible talks over and over again about make sure, make sure of your salvation. You know, this is something that we don't have to be in doubt if, you know, if we come to God in faith, but there's a lot of times that we call ourselves Christians why would you think that you're, you're a Christian? There's no repentance. You're still living in sin. 
Um, and I'm not talking about messing up. Everybody messes up. I'm talking about work. No, no, no. This is okay for me to live like this. I can choose to uh, be homosexual. I can choose to cheat on my wife. I can choose to, uh, you know, to do drugs and, and, and to cuss people out. And I can live however I want. Nobody's but the boss of me. And I don't have to... What? What makes, what makes us think that, that, that we can be gods when we're living for us? So I think that that's kind of a, a better uh, lesson to draw from the Mark of the Beast rather than getting scared of everything and, and seeing the Mark of the Beast anywhere. Now, regardless of whether something is wise or not wise, I'm not telling you guys to get vaccines or to get chipped or to get anything like that. I'm not even commenting on that. Not even in, in, in my scope. What I'm, what I'm saying here is maybe focus on the more important um, of this rather than finding conspiracies everywhere. Uh, So I think that that pretty much covers what I wanted to talk about. Okay.